Welcome to this episode of Learn Everyday English, your roadway to English proficiency. Glad to have you with me today. I'm back in the studio, as you can see, not outside or giving you a tour of our garden and herbs. I have, I think, going to be an interesting video for you. Uh, but before I jump into that or get into that, uh, you know, there's three things that you can do for me. One, hey, like the video. Number two, subscribe to the channel. And three, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit from these videos too, just like you. Okay, um, this is going to be the topic that we're going to be discussing today. And I've gotten comments from a lot of people and they tell me they have a difficult time maybe understanding uh, African American people here in the United States. Seems like when they talk, they use different words, expressions, just the way they talk, the manner and how they talk is kind of difficult to uh, understand. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Then I'm going to do a little skit. A skit is like a, you can say like a short play where people are acting and, um, you know, performing. So I'm going to have two characters that are going to be talking, having a real short or brief uh, conversation, but we're going to be using uh, a lot of slang words, expressions, and mannerisms, and see if you can understand uh, what they're talking about. Then I'm going to go back and uh, unpack that, as we say, unpack that, or kind of uh, take everything out, explain it to you, and make it clear. If you saw my short the other day, I'm going to break it down for you, break it down for you, so that you can understand it and in the details of what we're going to be talking about. But a lot of African American people um, speak or use what's called, and there's a term here in the United States called Ebonics. Ebonics. I'm going to read some notes here for you briefly. I don't know if you've heard that term before, Ebonics, but it's kind of like a blending of the word ebony. You know, ebony is a type of wood that's very dark or black. And phonics is like, uh, has to do with uh, speaking and dictation. So it's a, a blend or combination of ebony and phonics to get the word Ebonics. And it's kind of used to describe how African American people talk here in the United States. There's some other um, ways that they designate this type of speech. Sometimes you might hear the phrase African American Vernacular English, or AAVE. Sometimes it's also called African American English, Black English, Black Vernacular. Vernacular is just like speech, type of speech. Or even Black English Vernacular, BEV. So it's a type or variety a dialect, you could say, of the American English language. Uh, let's see what else. It's a. It's has some similarity to uh, common Southern American English, like I've talked to you before. The that might hear might speak here in Texas, Southern accent, but it's a little bit different. But it does have some similarities uh, with the Southern American English and its accent. But it's a variety spoken by, like I said, many blacks here in the United States. They, they use a lot of slang words, expressions, and you might be familiar with these because uh, if you like to listen to rap music, and a lot of the rappers or the people, people that uh, perform rap music are called rappers. They use a lot of this type of speech. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's just an expression you hear a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when people are talking and try to explain something, it's, it can be a little bit hard to understand. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, they say that a lot. You know what I'm saying? That expression, you know what I'm saying? Which means like, hey, do you understand me? Or that's right, right? Kind of, yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm not going to be talking about that expression today in my uh, skit, but uh, see what you think, and we'll break it down for you. All right, let's get into the uh, skit. And it's going to be uh, two guys that are uh, talking to each other over the phone. One guy is... Hey, yo, what's up, homie? Hey, not much, dog. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a while, man. Uh, what you been up to? Oh, not much, man. You know, uh, same old, same old. Uh, I was off for a few days, but I'm back to the grind now. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. Hey, uh, I called to invite you uh, over to the crib on Saturday to crash with some of the boys. Uh, gonna throw uh, some yard bird on the queue, and we can knock back some brewskis. Uh, let me know if you're down for that. Hey, yeah, uh, that sounds good to me, bro. Hey, count me in. What time you uh, kicking things off? Oh, around 5 p.m. or so, but hey, get here when you get here, okay? It'll be uh, good to catch up with you. It'll be good to catch up. Yeah, man, it'll be like old times. Thanks for the invite. Holla at you later. So, uh, what did you think about that conversation? I still got my cool hat on from when I'm talking. And uh, did you understand what they were saying? Going back and forth on the telephone call? use a lot of um, expressions maybe you're not uh, aware of or haven't heard of before. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to explain it to you so hopefully you'll understand what they were talking about. So let's go. The first guy called and he said, Yo, what's up, homie? Yo, what's up, homie? Yo means like, hey, hello. Homie is like, you know, a friend. So he said, hey, yo, what's up, homie? And the second guy, his friend says, ah, uh, not much, dog, not much, dog. Dog is just another word that uh, guys use to, uh, to talk, call each other, kind of like in a friendly way. Homie, dog. So, hey, what's up, pal? What's up, friend? Kind of thing. So then the first guy says, it's been a while, man. And that's very common. People will use, hey, man, what's up, man? Yeah, you know, man, I went down to the store and I saw my friend and, you know, man, he was, he was, uh, been a long time, no see. So man is, people just throw that in there a lot when they speak English. And he says, what you been doing? What you been doing? Like, what have you been doing? But instead of saying, what have you been doing? Or what have you been doing? They say, what you been doing? What you been doing? So this is fast. You can see what you been doing. And then the other guy said, hey, not much, man. So he replied with man back. Not much, man. The same old, same old. The same old, same old. It means the same old thing. Like I'm doing uh, nothing new. Doing the same thing all the time. And then he says, I was off for a few days, but I'm back to the grind. I'm back to the grind. The grind is uh, when you have to go to work, like something never ending work that you got to do is kind of like we say drudgery. It's like something that's uh, a lot of work, a lot of effort that you have to keep doing continually or continuously over and over again. We call that the grind, which means, hey, I just got to go back to work again, you know. Then the first guy says, yeah, I feel you, I feel you, which means I understand, I, I can feel, I can relate to what you're going through because I have to do the same thing too, I feel you. And he says, I called to you to invite you over to the crib on Saturday. The crib is just another word for like my house, the crib. The crib can also be, you know, place where little babies sleep. But here, crib is just my the house or apartment, the place where you live. To crash with some of the boys. To crash with some of the boys. Crash kind of means just to hang out. To, to Sometimes you might hear, to kick it. To kick it. Just sit on the couch, hang out, talk, watch a, f a football game or some sports event. Eat and drink. So that's to crash or to, to crash. And he says, I'm going to throw some yard bird on the queue. Yard bird is just another word for a name for chicken, 
or chicken. So he's going to put some chickens. He says on the queue. The queue is short for barbecue. Actually, barbecue grill. So he, he's just saying, hey, I'm going to grill or barbecue some chicken. So I'm going to throw some yard bird on the queue. And we can knock back some brewskis. To knock back means like to, to drink. To drink, to knock back some brewskis is beer. So we're going to, hey, drink some beer. Hey, let me know if you're down for that. Let me know if you're down for that. That means let me know if you're up, or we say up for that. It's the same thing, which means let me know if uh, you're cool with that. Let me know if that's something you want to do. You'll be able to come over and join us with. It's, that means are you down for it? Are you in on it? Are you okay with doing that? That means are you down for that? Then his friend says, hey, that sounds good to me, bro. Bro is just short for brother, brother. That's another, like a term of endearment. Friends say, hey, bro, what's up? Or, hey, bro, what's up, man? Hey, he says, count me in, count me in. And that means, yeah, include me, include me. I'm, I'm going to be part of the, uh, the group on Saturday. Hey, what time you, and he says, what time you kicking things off? Kicking things off means what time are you starting? What time are you starting the get together or the party, the gathering? And then his friend says, oh, around 5 p.m. or so. Or so means kind of more or less around 5. Hey, but just get here when you get here. Just get here when you get here means like, hey, no rush. Whenever, whenever you get here, whenever you can get here, that's fine, you know. And then he says, then his friend replies and says, yeah, it'll be like old times. It'll be like old times, like we back in the day when we used to see each other more often, get together. We can kind of reminisce, kind of remember. It'll be like times in we used to have in the past. And he says, holla at you later. Holla at you later. Holler doesn't mean like to holler can mean to shout or to scream and talk loud. But holler can mean, hey, I'm just, I'll call you back or I'll talk to you later. Hey, I'll holler at you later. I'll give you a buzz. Sometimes we say, I'll give you a buzz later. That means I'll call you later or I'll holler at you later. I'll talk to you later or call you later. So that's what that conversation meant. So is it clearer for you now? Did I break it down for you where you can understand that? You might want to go back and listen to the uh, conversation again. But I'll uh, read through it continually one more time and see if you can understand. Yo, what's up, homie? Uh, not much, dog. Hey, it's been a while, man. What you been up to? Not much, man. The same old, same old. I was off for a few days, but I'm back to the grind. Yeah, I feel you. Hey, I called to invite you over to the crib on Saturday to crash with some of the boys. I'm going to throw some yard bird on the queue, and we can knock back some brewskis. Let me know if you're down for that. Hey, that sounds good to me, bro. Count me in. What time you kicking things off? Oh, around 5 p.m. or so. Just get here when you get here. Hey, it'll be good to catch up. Yeah, it'll be like old times. Hey, thanks for the invite. Holla at you later. So is that clear now? What did you think about this, uh, this skit, kind of this episode, this conversation of two uh, homies talking uh, on the phone to each other? Have you heard this type of speech or conversation before? Do you find it confusing or you like it? Hey, let me know what you think in the comments. I think that's it for this video. I want to make it a little bit short. But again, this is talking about Ebonics like African-American vernacular or speech. And I have a sheet here which has a lot of phrases and words uh, about Ebonics, so I'll be throwing those out at you, throwing those out at you periodically to expose you to that because, like I said, a lot of people have told me, hey, I got uh, problems or difficulty, you know, understanding certain types of English and American English and especially African-American people when they speak. So uh, 
hopefully this will help uh, help with some of that. But from what I've learned as you know uh, studying Spanish, it just takes practice. Your ear has to become tuned to hearing uh, certain accents and phrases and how people speak. For example, I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this means like I'll close or end with this. Yeah, I have a, a difficult problem in learning Spanish and understanding uh, Spanish people out from Spain, not because how they speak, it's because they speak very fast. I have a difficulty sometimes understanding people from the Caribbean, uh, from Puerto Rico, La República Dominicana, y Cuba, porque they have a different kind of accent. They can also speak fast. May They have a different way of speaking, and they use a lot of uh, different words, expressions, modismos, jergas. So I have the same problem or issue in Spanish that you do in English. So it's a universal problem. It's a universal problem. But don't get discouraged because uh, learning a language is a lifetime endeavor. Lifetime endeavor, like a lifetime uh, thing that you do, that you have to work at. As the expression says, Rome wasn't built in a day. So you're not going to learn English you know, overnight or in three months, like a lot of people say, or even a year. It may take you two, three, four, five, six years. And I've been learning Spanish now between five and six years. And I'm at a point now I feel pretty comfortable. And uh, I had a breakthrough the other day where I was listening to some uh, three gentlemen on a kind of uh, interview show. They were from the República Dominicana. And I was listening to them and I realized, hey, I can understand most of what they're saying where before I struggled with that. So... It's like a light will go off and you'll realize, I am improving. It may be slow, but you're realizing it. So just keep up the hard work. Keep up the good work. Keep uh, listening to podcasts, watching videos like this, maybe reading, writing. Anything that you can do uh, accumulates and it adds up and it will help you uh, on your English language journey. So again, that's it for today. I hope I didn't ramble on and on too much, but remember three things you can do for me. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about it. So that's it for uh, today. Have a good day, week, wherever you are, and thanks for watching this episode of Learn Everyday English. Talk to you later. Hey, goodbye.